We walk by faith and not by sight. No gracious words we hear of him who spoke as others spoke, but we believe him near. We may not touch his hands nor sign, nor follow We continue in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. May I welcome all of you to this celebration. We're now in the month of November. Many things happen in November, Thanksgiving. We also remember our veterans, because in November we mention remember and pray for all those who have gone through the door of death, which we will one day be called through that door, not fearfully, hopefully, with great joy in our hearts, because Christ, who is present with us now, will meet us then in glory. And so we come into his presence now, and we welcome all those who may be joining us through the social media by kindness of the media ministry, that they will also pray for the souls of the faithful departed, and also be ready to welcome Christ in glory at the moment of their death. Lord Jesus, helper of the needy, Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, lover of the poor, Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, bread of life to feed all our hungers, Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And we thank God the Father for giving us our loving and merciful Savior as we sing. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We pray. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us 
all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. And through the readings this evening, God reminds us that through his grace, we can be very generous as Christ was in sacrificing his life totally for us sinners. A reading from the first book of Kings. In those days, Elijah the prophet went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her, please bring me a small cup full of water to drink. She left to get it, and he called out after her, please bring along a bit of bread. She answered, as the Lord, as the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar and, and a little oil in my jug. Just now I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose, but first make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year, and he and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf, not that he might offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that were so, he would have had to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. But now, once for all, he has appeared at the end of the ages to take away sin by his sacrifice. Just as, is, just as it is appointed that human beings die once, and after this, the judgment, so also Christ, offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. In the course of his teaching, Jesus said to the crowds, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows and as a pretext recite lengthy prayers. They will receive a very severe condemnation. Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury. For they have all contributed from their surplus wealth. But she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. My dear friends in Christ, years ago, maybe even 50, I remember reading about a Texan millionaire who had been interviewed by a journalist because he was so generous to his church and charities. And he was being praised by the journalist. And then he, he, said, he said, well, it's not a question of how much I give from my wealth, but how much of God's gift to me do I 
keep for my reasonable needs myself. And in fact, Christ said, you love others as you love yourself, so you have to care for yourself. I presume that the two widows in today's readings had been graced with a generous spirit like that Texan millionaire. Well, it's amazing. We can ask ourselves, what was the motive that made them give? First reading, what that poor widow had left for her own son, and she said, well, I'm going to, I was about to make a meal and then die with nothing else left, with starvation. And then this woman in the gospel who put in all that she had to live on. Well, first of all, we've got to be aware of what Christ said at the beginning of this gospel. He gave us a warning. Beware, he said. Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes. Look at us. And they devour the houses of widows and as a pretext recite lengthy prayers. Sounds very familiar, doesn't it? So perhaps... This woman in the gospel was afraid, yes, of what if she didn't give all she had with all that to live on, she gave that. I'm afraid of what these scribes are going to say to me. And the woman in the first reading, perhaps she was initially afraid of, well, yes, a holy prophet, if I don't obey him, but then noticed that the prophet said to her, do not be afraid. A phrase which is repeated in the, in the whole of the Bible 365 times. Do not be, be afraid. You might feel afraid. Do not be afraid. And so she's trusted. She trusted in God, who the prophet quoted. He said, well, what you have, that flower, and they all are not going to cease, and they didn't for a whole year. And no doubt this woman in the gospel remembered what it says in the scriptures and in the Psalms that God has a care for the widows and the orphans, so she was trusting in God. So I don't think it was fear that led both these widows to be so generous. Now, in a moment, we will be taking up, as usual, our offertory collection. And some of you will know what you have decided to give regularly online. And I trust that you are not motivated by fear, but that you have been moved to be generous, like that Texan millionaire. You may recall that St. Paul, writing in the letter to the Corinthians, the second letter to the Corinthians, tells about how he was organizing a collection for the poor in Jerusalem. who were desperately poor, starving. And I quote, he said, Remember, anyone who slow, sows sparsely will reap sparsely as well. And anyone who sows generously will reap generously as well. Each one should give as much as he or she has decided on his own initiative, not reluctantly or under compulsion. Remember Christ's words about the scribes. For God loves a cheerful giver, a cheerful giver. I hope you've noticed that whenever we have a collection, we have an offertory song. We're singing cheerfully, joyfully. And in fact, when I was working in Pakistan and India and in also in Africa and Cameroon, they used to be dancing, bringing forth the gifts that I share in that. Yes, dance, because we're full of joy, not reluctant. Bill, oh, God loves a cheerful giver. And let's remember what Christ said on another occasion. Give to others and God will give to you. God is not outdone in generosity. He's not outdone in generosity, as we saw that from that first reading. Indeed, you will receive a full measure, a generous helping poured into your hands, all that you can hold. 
The measure you use for others is the measure that God will use for you. Now, I want to remind people, it's not through making resolutions that you can do generous acts of service. That was condemned early in the church. Resolutions are useless on their own. It's by the grace of God. Christ said, without me, you can do nothing good. And so, I hope, we pray often, Lord, you see how weak I am, how grasping I am, how selfish I am. Oh, you pour your love, as he does, through the sacraments into our hearts, so that when you are generous, it's Christ in you that's being generous. Christ was able to wash the feet of his disciples, and above all, Christ who died on the cross shedding every drop of his blood to save us sinners. And that's why this reading, as we're getting towards the end of the liturgical year, is of Mark. Mark wants us to recall from his gospel that this was the final visit of Christ to Jerusalem, his final teaching. And he wants us to realize, yeah, what happened immediately after this? That he was arrested, his disciples abandoned him, most of them, that he was tortured, scourged, insulted, nailed to a cross, and gave himself totally for our salvation shedding every drop of his blood in agony, truly human as he was, and knowing that he could have stopped this at any moment. But he knew it was his Father's will that he would be the icon of what God is like. God is prepared to pour out his love abundantly, unconditionally, all-embracingly to save us. And it's only when we contemplate this generosity not only of these widows, but the generosity of Christ. And he is the one who can give us the power to be generous. Why? Because in a moment, Christ will say, take and eat, take and drink. This is my body, this is my blood given up for you. And it's when we receive Christ totally, body, blood, soul, and divinity, the risen Christ who fills us with his self-sacrificing love, that we can go out of this church and begin to be generous, yes, like these widows. The only words of Christ which are not recorded in the gospel, but they are recorded in the Acts of the Apostles, are the following. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And what does the word blessed mean? More joyful, more happy, more cheerful to give than to receive. So that we're, God loves a cheerful giver, yes, because we're sharing, we're allowing God to extend his love to other people through our generosity. It's he himself, as I say, Christ in us, who's reaching out lovingly to everyone. And so, my prayer is that, yes, when you receive Holy Communion, you will be honest. Tell Jesus how you are. Maybe I am somewhat grasping, somewhat selfish. Lord, you become in me a generous person. And I want to thank all of you, each and every one of you, no matter how much you give, whether it's little or more, thank you on behalf of the priest, but of the whole community, because what this church is able to do for the poor, to help youth go on retreats, help people to get educated, children to get education. I hope you've you followed the, uh, the Night of Hope last Thursday evening on the diocese, half an hour, where children were given their witness to the value of a Catholic education and so on. And one little boy who said, what I learned in this school is that I must look after the other students before I look after myself. What a beautiful attitude. That's given. It's a gift. It's not someone we acquire from our own thinking, our own resolutions. And so I thank God for every one of you, for all the generosity that you're giving especially people who have volunteered to give their time, their energy, their gifts, their talents. People who come 
during the week to teach catechism to those who are not in schools and so on. People who help, people who are helping behind the scenes, volunteers, our readers, our Eucharistic ministers, so many. And I hope that it's, you find joy in this service. For God loves a cheerful giver. And my prayer is that you will one day rejoice in the presence of God who has brought you through the door of death, as we remember in this month of November, not fearfully, but joyfully, because you're meeting Christ as you now meet him in Holy Communion. And we praise the Father through Jesus, joyfully, now and forever. Amen. Let us stand now and profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, which alone has the words that we express our faith in, the communion of saints, the cooperation of all of us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now knowing the Lord's love for us, we place before him our needs. For the church, that we, be, we may be fervent in our faith and in experiencing the power of God's love, so that we will proclaim and share what we have seen and heard with the entire world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for our Holy Father's intentions for the month of November, that people who suffer from depression or burnout will find support and a light that opens them up to life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all public officials, may they strive to govern with the wisdom of God and protect life from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For men and women in our community, that they may respond generously with open hearts and willing spirits if the Lord calls them to the priesthood or religious life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For an increase in missionary charity, that our spiritual sacrifices may help the message and love of our Lord to be made known to our neighbors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For veterans and all who have served our country, especially those struggling with the effects of PTSD. May they find relief and support from our community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the poor, and the mourning, may God's gracious mercy bring them comfort and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially those who have no one to pray for them, May they soon rest in the fullness of God's kingdom together with all the angels and saints and for the special intentions of Deacon Doug Davez for whom this mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Allow me to add that Douglas Davas, who was our deacon for a number of years, has now got a form of Parkinson's disease and he's being cared for by his wife, Sandy, who is one of our sac sacristans. And let us pray especially for him in the difficulties that he has now walking and so on and the suffering he's enduring as we pray for his intentions, asking the intercession of the Mother of Christ as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, you are kind and merciful. In your wisdom, please hear and answer our prayers this day, for we make them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Please be seated. <clears throat> Sisters and brothers, pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us thank God for all the generous people who've helped us in our lives to this very moment. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you so love the world, the sinners in the world, that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you joyful thanks as in exultation we sing. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of
are indeed holy and loving, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. But through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Holy Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Juan Diego, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, Edward, his assistant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
And let us pray now for delivered from all evil, especially destructive selfishness, as we pray that we'll be filled with the grace of God as we pray in the words Jesus himself taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us as we forgive us. Not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, and say also to us now, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, the faith in each of our hearts, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer each other a joyful sign of peace. This is Jesus, our risen Savior, who wants to fill us with his own self-sacrificing love so that we can be generous in serving one another. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul.
Well, with our lives in Christ's hands, let us pray. <clears throat> Nourished by these sacred gifts, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your Holy Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered through Christ our Lord. You may prefer to be seated for the announcements.
And the first one is that the National Vocations Awareness Week is celebrated this week to promote and support vocations to the priesthood, the diaconate, and the consecrated life. So please pick up a prayer card as you leave the church to pray for these religious vocations. Secondly, the registration for the teen retreat is officially closed. So thank you to everyone who signed up and donated towards the retreat. So please pray for all of them as the, re the date of, of their departure approaches. Thirdly, St. Mary Bash's November fundraiser is Wednesday, November the 10th at some of the boroughs, some, some boroughs, if I got it correct, at Chandler Fashion Mall from open to close. It says, oh, wherever this, the close is open. Okay. So some boroughs will donate 30% back to the school. So print out the flyer, present it on your phone, or simply mention St. Mary Basher. And thank you for your continued support. Fourthly, Mariachi Night is Saturday, November the 20th, and tickets are $25 each. They are on sale outside after every Mass or in the office. And finally, the Knights are selling roasted almonds after all Masses this weekend. So, okay, get your almonds. So please remember to pick up a bulletin for more parish news and have a safe and blessed week. And may I thank you again for your continued support. It seems there is a, another, it doesn't mention it here, but anyway, go on. There is a collection, apparently. Okay, come forward. Is it, what is it for? Can you shout it so they all know? I didn't hear, but anyway, the, uh, you must have heard. You didn't hear it. Shout it loud. What the what it is for? Aid relief. Aid as in the country. Every country. Okay. Okay. So may I thank you for your generous support of all that we do here in the church, and may I thank all those who volunteer to help us in preparing for the Mass, our sections are behind the scenes, those looking after the sound, those who help you to find a place, our collectors, our ushers, our team of servers, trained very well by Robert, um, our readers, Eucharistic ministers. Who else? Oh, well, who help us to fill us with joy? We thank our choir and our choir leader and instrumentalist. Thank you. And so after the collection, I will give you the blessing. And the blessing, I hope, will bring you joy. Always remember that thanksgiving, always, thanksgiving to God, thanksgiving to anyone, will bring joy to your heart. That's why it is at the center of our Christian worship. Christ said, do this, and that is especially let us give thanks always and everywhere so that we may be filled with joy. Please stand now for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may the joy, the peace, and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you, your families and friends, and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. And let us go forth praising the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Wealth can be an idol built of gleaming gold, bringing dreams of paradise, futures bought and sold. Some will choose to gather it, all that they can hoard but as for me and my house we will serve the lord as for me and my house we will serve the lord we will serve the lord we will serve the lord as for me and my house we will serve the lord we will serve the lord we will serve the lord
Pleasure is a siren promising the flesh. Bring relief from emptiness, a hiding place from death. Some will choose to chase it until it leaves them bored. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Power is the hunger burning in the breast. I walk among the mighty and trample on the rest. Some will choose to gain it by lyle, guile, or sword. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord.